Hey everyone, in the previous video in this series, I talked about different table functions in DAX and how they interact with the blank row that is added into the model. And in this video, let's take a look at another example where that difference can be really important so that your calculations are not incorrect and you do not get any error. And before that, let me just introduce you to the example. So first of all, that let's understand the definition of static segmentation because that is what I'm going to use in this example. And if you want to read more about that, you can simply go to this website, which is daxpatterns.com and you can search for the static segmentation pattern. So in simple terms, or you only need to read the line that I've highlighted. So it says you do not want to slice the data by individual prices. Instead, you want to simplify the analysis by grouping prices within range of prices. So let's go to the Power BI file to understand what it actually means. So see, you can see that on the screen, I have a matrix comprising of class column. Then I have, then I'm trying to slice the sales amount by the class. And I'm also trying to slice the product count by that class. And in my products table, I have around 2,500 rows and I have five or four or five columns. So I have product key, brand and color. But instead of slicing that sales amount and product count by the product key, what I'm trying to do is simply group all the sales amount into three different classes. So you can assume that the products that have the highest sale are categorized under the platinum class and the products that did not make it to the list of platinum colors or the class were segmented inside the gold class and other remaining products were defaulted inside the silver class. And if I bring the product key into the matrix, you will see that the data is more, much more granular and in each row, the gold class is repeated with the sales amount for each product key. But this data doesn't actually make any sense because the user has to scroll down through 2500 rows and try to make sense of the sales amount. And it doesn't show any kind of trend as well. So instead of slicing the data by product key or color or the brand, I have simply created three classes in my model and I'm trying to slice my data by that by those classes. So I hope the the example at hand is now clear and let's see how we can create that by ourselves. So let's get started. To begin with, what I've done is I've simply created a different table inside my model and I've imported that. So let's see the data inside that table. And it has four columns. The first one is the class that we have already seen. And then in the second and third columns, I have defined the upper bound and the lower bound. So my min column is my lower bound and the max is the upper bound. And then I have the class key, which I will later use to sort the class column and also to create a relationship between the products table and the sales configuration table. So you can see that if a product, all the products that have the sales amount between zero and 50,000 would be classified under the silver and all the other products that have made the sales amount between 50,000 and 500,000 would get classified inside the gold category and any other product will simply fall under the platinum class. So to begin with, what we need to do is simply create a new calculated column in the products table. And then we are going to use that calculated column to create a relationship between sales configuration table and the products table. So let's go to the product table and see how we can create that relationship and that calculated column. Let's move to the products table. So in the products table, let's click on the new column option and I'm going to name it as class key only because I'm going to import the class key from that sales configuration table so that I can create a relationship. And the first thing that I want to do is simply assign the sales amount for each row. So let's create a new variable and I'm going to name it as sales amount that will be equal to total sales. And let's return that variable. If I press enter, you can see that for rows where there is a sales amount or a matching row in the sales table, we are getting the sales amount. But apart from that, other rows are defaulting to blank. That simply means that those products didn't have any corresponding row in the sales table. And that's okay. We are not concerned about that. But the main problem with this is that most of the, or you can say all of the sales amount are actually falling between zero and 50,000. So what will actually happen is that all the products in the products table will get uh, summarized in the silver class only, and that will not work for this example. So what I'm going to do is simply create, ca calculate the total sales measure, but I want to remove the filter context or the 
filter context that is created by context transition from the product key, brand, and the subcategory column. And I only want to keep the product color in the filter context. And for that, what I can do is simply introduce calculate, not closing balance, calculate. And I'm going to use the all except function. So let's write all except products, products, color. So what will actually happen is that when calculate will in initiate the context transition, it will add product key, brand, color, subcategory into the filter context. And the all except function, it actually is a calculate modifier. So it will kick in, kick in after the context transition has taken its place so that it can modify the behavior of uh, or the impact of the context transition. So it will remove all the columns from the filter context and will only keep products color into the filter context. So in easier term, we are actually filtering the sales amount by the currently iterated color. So the sales amount that I will get will only for the black color. So let's try to return this value. And you can see that we have received a sales amount that that is actually greater than what we were actually seeing earlier. So let's see what all we get. So we are seeing 251, 367. These will fall under the silver category. And from 56,000 onwards, we will get our gold cat class. And for the rest of these, I think we will fall under the platinum class and that will suffice for this example. And the next thing that we want to do is simply filter the sales configuration table based on the sales amount that I've received in this calculated column. So let's create another variable and I'm going to name it as current color class. And I'm going to initiate the filter function and I'm going to reference the sales configuration table. So what I'm going to do is simply check that if the sales amount that I received in this variable is that greater than or equal to the lower bound of the sales configuration table. So I can write sales configuration min. And I also want to make sure that it is between the min and the upper bound. So for that, I can write sales amount should be less than or equal to, sorry, it should be less than the sales configuration max bound. And if I close that, and let's try to see how many rows we are actually returning. So I can write count rows, current color class. And for each cell, we are actually returning only one row, which is what actually we want. And in the final variable, we are simply going to retrieve the key column from the sales configuration table. So for that, let's create a variable named as result. And that will be basically a calculate over values and I'm going to write sales configuration class key. And all I'm going to do is simply inject this variable into the filter context. So let's do that. And instead of count rows, I'm going to return my result variable and let's click on confirm. So you can see that we have received one, two and three, and that's what we actually want. So now what we can do is simply create a relationship between sales configuration table and this product table based on that class key. So let's go to the data model view. And if I try to create a relationship between these two table, you will see that we will get an error which says that a circular dependency was detected. So why is that happening? Because we haven't written anything in the code that should actually initiate that circular dependency. So if you have seen the previous video, you will notice that what DAX engine actually does is it tries to add a blank row on the one side of the relationship. And in this case, the one side of the relationship is sales configuration table and the many side is the products table. So when we try to create a relationship between these two based on this code, which is actually using the values function. And if you remember in the previous video, we saw that values actually respects the blank row that is added into the model. So in this case, we do not have any blank row, but the function va values is actually designed in a way that it tries to make sure that even in case if currently there is no blank row, there is a possibility that a blank row might get added into the model in future. So because of which it does, it tries to create a circular dependency between these two tables. So let me just explain what I mean. So when we try to create a relationship between sales configuration table and the products table, what actually happens is that the class key depends upon the class key in the products table. So 
and the class key contains the code which is using the values function and values function actually depends upon the blank row which gets added to the one side so what we are doing is class key depends upon the products the class key column in the products table and the class key column in the products table depends upon the sales configuration table for the blank row so you can see that there is a circular dependency because both the table depend on each other for a different thing so even though there is no blank row inside sales configuration table at the moment but there is a possibility that some products may not belong to the sales configuration table for example let's say in future i remove the silver class from my sales configuration table then some products will not have any relationship between with those rows in the sales configuration table and because of which there can be a blank row in the sales configuration table upon which the values function will depend and therefore we are getting the circular dependency so how we can actually eliminate that circular circular dependency so if you have seen the previous video there is a function which actually doesn't include that blank row in its result and which is distinct function so if instead of using the values i use distinct and click on confirm there is nothing that will change in the result we are still getting 1 2 and 3 and if i try to create a relationship now let's build a relationship and you can see that we are allowed to create the relationship because now class key depends upon the class key column in the products table but the code of the class key column in the products table doesn't depend upon the blank row that is added into the sales configuration table and because of which we are allowed to create a relationship and now what we can do is simply go to the report view and build a report so let me just remove that and i can show you how to create that from scratch so in from the sales configuration table what will i what i will do is simply import my class column and then i can bring my total sales measure and my products count measure so you can see that we are now categorizing or slicing the data by the class so we have sales amount for gold platinum and silver as well as the row count and one thing that we can fix in this report is that the gold platinum and silver are not actually ordered based upon their importance so what we can do is simply go to the sales configuration table and sort the class column by the class key and here is that option i think so it, it's inside the table tools so let me just expand that and there there you go so what i need to do is simply sort this column by the class key and if i go back to the report you can see that silver gold and platinum are now sorted in the ascending order and if i want to sort it in descending order i can simply choose the option of sort by class and make sure that the sort descending option is selected so before wrapping up let me just show you how that these calculations are actually working so that you do not have any doubt so in the example i have only shown you the showed you the products and the sales configuration table but what actually happens is that when the sales configuration table is filtered the filter is flown from the sales configuration table through the products table and then after that it actually filters the sales table so if i am currently viewing the platinum so the filter context in this cell is platinum and what actually happens is that filter context filters the sales configuration table which in turn filters the products table for only platinum products and then platinum products filter the sales table and then that's how we get the sales amount and in case of products count the filter context filters the sales configuration table and then it filters the products table but after which the filter is not flown or you can say sent to the sales table and it only stops at the products table and then we get our row count so that was all for this video and if you have any questions for me just let me know in the comment section and i will see you in the next one until then have a great day